and don't give up. You now I was getting the message ready. And I fought and fought and fought. God had put it in my head and I'd say, I'm, I'm on my own, I got my own thing going on here. And I was sitting in the, I, I was sitting by Tracy and she was reading her book or whatever and I was like, I can't, I just can't get peace about continuing our Hebrews journey. And all of you know Sydney's sick and the doctors have given her a month to live at the most She's been sent home on hospice, and they're coming. They're coming, and, 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 and Tracy and I went over there yesterday, and we was driving over, and she said, you know, I understand that God has his will. But she said, I, I'm still believing. And it's not over till it's over. And it's it's been a big wait. Because if you go over there and watch that little girl... She don't complain. She worries about other people. Last night she was getting her party stuff ready, putting the bags together for the kiddos. Not really worried about anything for herself. She worries about others. And I talked to quite a few people this week. They're wanting to know why. You know, asking all kinds of questions. Last night, I, Tracy and I, instead of going to come to the movie, we was over ministering to just family members that was coming in and out of the house and getting to talk to them. And, and one of them said, Chris, I don't understand. And I said, why don't we go outside? And I went outside and we started talking. And two years ago, I had people come up and say, why do kids are like I'll get back with you I serve a loving God and he loves us all and he's you know but how come bad things happen to good people especially children because in the Bible God loved the children he said we have to come to him for salvation like a child because all of you know growing up your kids they listen to everything mom and dad say to a certain age and they everything you say is the gospel if daddy does it it's okay if mommy does it it's okay and you know I, I went outside and we started talking and I said this is going to sound I, I, I know you're wanting this great big ten dollar word you're wanting a big passage in the scripture that says be okay but I said back when Adam and Eve was in the garden and the Lord said that fruit of the knowledge tree is forbidden and she picked it because the devil made her do it and they ate that's when sin came in now God made us and made the Garden of Eden so we could live. One is we would never have to wear clothes because we wouldn't be embarrassed. We'd always have the best of food and everything would be lush and green and everything would be perfect. But he gave us what, what we call our will. And the devil tricked us. Men, we've been cursed ever since. Ladies could have children without pain. But when that happened, they got cursed with pain. That's where everything comes from, sin. God's a merciful and just God. And that's the reason that bad things happen to good people. The Bible says it rains on the just unjust. That means that when things happen to me it happens to you. If it happens to poor people, it's going to happen to rich. And that's the reason that we have sick people. That's the reasons that children pass. And that's the reason that cities sick. We 
because we've all we're all going to heaven. And how many of you think ultimate healing is being perfect on this earth? We've got so many people that they've they've called for so long and said, Chris, I don't understand why you're sick. I mean you're doing God's work and it seems like you just get hammered. I'm okay with that. Hey, if you get served lemons, what do you do? You make lemonade. You don't cry over spill milk. If you used to walk into her house today, she'd want to make sure that you were okay, not her. She goes and tells all the doctors she knows exactly what's going on. Her God has given her two and a half years more than what they first said. We serve an awesome God. But our ultimate healing is when He says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. When we stand before the Lord, I don't even know if we'll be able to stand. It'll be so bright think we'll be on our knees. But God really just laid it heavy on my heart today. And we'll get back to our series on mornings. But today I want to talk about we never give up praying. We pray, 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 pray. And then pray again. A young man went into a drugstore to buy three boxes of chocolates. Small, medium, and large. When the pharmacist asked him about the three boxes, he said, Well, I'm going over to a new girlfriend's house for supper. Then we're going out. If she only lets me hold her hand, then I'll give her the small box. Y'all hang on. Come on. If she lets me kiss her on the cheek, then I'll give her a medium box. But if she really lets me smooch seriously, I'll give her a big box. And he made his purchase and left. That evening as he sat down at the dinner table with his girlfriend's family, he asked if he could say the prayer before the meal. And he began to pray. And he prayed an earnest, intense prayer that lasted for almost five minutes. When he finished, his girlfriend said, You never told me you were such a religious person. He said, And you never told me your dad was the pharmacist. Well, there you go. Corny joke 101. He didn't know that his dad was a pharmacist. It's a good thing to pray under any circumstance. But this morning, Jesus had a good deal to say about prayer. His disciples watched him, and they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. They never said, teach us how to do miracles. They never said, teach us how to teach or how to love people. The one thing that was so fascinating about his life and what they wanted to imitate so bad was Jesus' prayer life. We're going to look at Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. And he had a parable about prayer. So Jesus always helped people understand what he was trying to teach them through stories. Some of those stories, if you find a story in the Bible and you go back and find out, he tied it into what was going around. It made sense to the people that we, he was teaching. 
Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should pray and never give up. You don't have to wonder about this meaning of the parable because the interpretation is given in the first first verse. It says, One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city and he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him and repeatedly saying, Give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people. But this woman was driving me crazy I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Now, if you know anything about back in that day, ladies, they just wasn't important back then. Then the story begins with this widow who had an adversary who was trying to take advantage of her probably somebody trying to cheat her out of money or the land that her husband left her because back in the Bible times women had few legal rights they were trying to take from her because there was probably plenty of women back in that day that didn't throw up a stink So in Jesus' parable, not only had the hurdle of being a female, she faced a terrible judge. He didn't have any fear for God, nor did he care about people or what they thought. You ever been around anybody that just don't care what you think? Would just soon run over you as look at you? And if you got your feelings hurt, you might as well chalk it up to a bad he said juju but not they didn't care whether they come and made it right or what you thought but he was probably a gentle a gentile judge designated by the Roman authorities now judgeships were sold and bought and judges could make a good living from the bribes that were common and most of them bribed the judge so that they could take the land the money or whatever she had no money to bribe the judge her only recourse was to come before him time after time crying and asking grant me justice from my adversary he would just he would ignore her. But she kept on coming back, begging him. Anybody ever heard the squeaky wheel gets the grease? I think she was a squeaky wheel. She was determined. She wasn't going to let no man or her adversary run her over. She didn't have much, didn't have any authority back in that day. Bless their heart, she wasn't taking no for an answer. You can imagine what the judge probably said when he seen her walking in. Anybody ever see somebody coming in where you're at, or maybe going to Walmart, somebody's walking down the aisle, and you go, Good, not, I'm going to be here a while. I'm in a hurry. One, one day I was in a hurry through Walmart. And I looked all the way down probably to where the black was and somebody was coming. So I started doing the weed. Trying to, I was in a hurry. I get in trouble by Tracy every day because she says I talk to people. That's what I was put on this earth to do. That's my gift. I like to talk. 
So I weave in and out, and I know for a fact they saw me. So as I'm driving out the driveway, or the parking lot at Walmart, I'm calling them on the phone going, please don't be mad, I saw you, but I, I'm in a hurry. But this judge, he hated to even, hated to even get out of bed because he knew when he went to his place of business that this woman was going to be camped outside, kind of like the people did to get an iPhone 5C. I mean, one of the pastors in this town drove to Ohio in the middle of the night and camped out on the front lawn so he could get an iPhone. Thinking that dude didn't learn nothing in seminary. Why would you camp out? We want what we want, and we want it right now. We don't like to wait. So when we pray... We're like, Lord, I know you got a lot to do. And I got the faith of a mustard seed, so you need to get on it. Because I got other things to do. We don't want to wait. We don't say, Lord, it's your will and I want your will. It's, I know you want this to be done. <laughs> we think we know what Jesus wants. I think we ought to ask forgiveness. Because we're an impatient people. But this judge thought, oh no, not her again. And in verse 5, he admits she bothered him. Now, Biggin's going to get a kick out of this. He admits she bothered him. And the word translation of bothering literally means poke in the eye. With a screwdriver. No, that's that's red. That's my version. That's the CLT, not. Yeah. Anyway, poke you in the eye. I mean, that's like being punched in the throat. It hurts. <laughs> Makes the wind not come out very good. But he was upset because she constantly was in his face. He's thinking. Please go do something else. You'll be okay. This constant begging and constant nagging finally paid off. And he ruled in her favor. This morning, as we got everything happening, maybe something's going on in your life. Maybe you feel like you got the wrong end of the stick. Maybe you're worried about something at home. And like I've been all week, we're worried about this sin. But we're not supposed to worry. We're supposed to pray. Now worry is filling your mind with bad thoughts of the worst that could happen. Worry's like water. It begins to trickle. It begins a trickle of doubt that creeps into your mind. And if it isn't stopped, it soon becomes a stream of fear which creates a pond of paranoia. Anybody ever been paranoid? Watched a movie and then had to go home by yourself? give you a little insight. Don't watch scary movies and they won't bother you. He's carved a Grand Canyon in your anxiety level in your mind. You know, when we come up here with our problems, I've said time and time again, when we lay them here at the altar, don't pick them up. Because if you want a healing, Lord. If you want Him to take care of it, you have to leave it right here. You can't pick it up. You can't do anything about it. So why constantly worry about something you can't fix? Apostle Paul, he was stuck in a Roman dungeon 
facing the possibility of having his head chopped off. Now that ought to give you something to worry about. If I was sitting in a jail and I seen the guillotine thing sitting there, they was trying it out, you know, probably got the pumpkin or a watermelon. Could you not worry? Could you sit in that jail and say, Lord's got this. Are you listening to me? Instead of worrying about dying, he prayed in addition to praying. He wrote some letters of encouragement to encourage Christians to pray instead of worrying. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I was sitting in a jail fixing to have my head chopped off, I don't know that writing a letter to encourage somebody's on my list. Because as humans, we're all going, woe is me. The Lord's left me. And our faith is shot out the window. When God doesn't work in the way we ought to, we think He doesn't care. Look at this word I found in Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live for Christ Jesus. When you're looking down the barrel of something that is going to catastrophically change your mind forever, what do we do? We worry. What do we do? We cry. gives us a peace when we're going through the valley. When you face a challenge or a circumstance, you got two choices. You can lose heart and let worry take over. Or you can pray about it. Now I know we're raised in a society where we're supposed to always be able to fix it. Any of you grow up and your dad could fix anything? It didn't matter what it was. If it happened, probably the ladies more than the guys. Or guys, if you grew up and your mom took care of all kinds of stuff and you never had to worry, you know if it was a problem, mom could fix it. Maybe now in your life today, there's something that's hit you like a two-by-four. Don't quit. You gotta pray. Persistent. In the parable of the poor widow, she kept on begging the judge to grant her justice. She didn't just ask once a day and say, "Let me know what you decide." She prepared his ears with persistent petitions. You ever ask God for something, and when He didn't answer? Your prayer immediately, you quit pray you quit praying. Because you didn't think he'd listen. You gotta constantly pray. Constantly pray. And if he doesn't do it in the way that you think it ought to be done, maybe he's saying no. You ever thought about that? When we pray for something, our mindset is is God's going to give me the desires of my heart. What's that mean? It means if you're living right, if you're living your life right, your desires are His desires. And we get the desires of our heart. Many of 
Many of you remember back the night before the Son of God was on the way to the cross. Where'd he stop? He stopped in the garden of Gethsemane. If you remember, he told the disciples, you sit right here, I'm going to have some time. story. He started crying out to God. Sweating blood. Do you realize that we've probably got some nurses in here and some EMTs. What would it take for you to sweat blood? Your body would be having to go through something horrific. Jesus was begging God to take this cup from me. He prayed and prayed. The disciples went to sleep. God didn't take that cup. God didn't take that cup from him. It was so intense. Sweat and blood. Just like when you sweat before him. He was headed to the cross because of our sin. God didn't take the cup in. Because it wasn't the Lord's will. If he hadn't have went through the cross, we would not have forgiveness. His prayer wasn't answered. Because of the sin in this world. He prayed, Father, take this cup from me. But he didn't stop there. But not my will, but your will. So many times in our life we pray for a healing. We pray that God would intervene in a mighty way and take the weight off of us, heal people from cancer and their afflictions in their body. Sometimes His will is a different better. This morning I want you to know when things happen and we can't understand them and we question why, we still want God's will. Each one of us do because the perfect fix to problems like that is standing before the Almighty. Him saying, Well done, come in. Remember me telling you we're like an ant farm? Jesus is up there watching all the ants build the nest and build the tunnels. And sometimes he looks down there and goes, Hey, you're fixing to mess up. That, that, you're at the end of the road. Turn around, quit digging. Sometimes we're in there just, I mean, and digging like there ain't no tomorrow. So we run to the head. Run to the head wall. Lord, I was praying for you to touch him. I was praying that you would help me in this situation. Maybe he said that. Never thought about it? I don't think about God saying no very many times when I'm praying. Because I'm, I know he's going to fix it. But his will fix it. I fixed it. They're two different things. We think that being perfect on earth is what we want. When reality, heaven is our final destination. And some people have to go earthly. But we want His will. Look at Paul again. Paul had some kind of painful affliction 
he called a thorn in the flesh. You ever had one of them? You had somebody just rubbed you the wrong way no matter what went on. Maybe like a burr under your saddle. Anybody had a burr under their saddle? He begged the Lord to remove that pain, and he asked not once, not twice, but three times before the Lord answered. And when God answered, it wasn't what he was looking for. Paul was wanting the Lord to take away the affliction. But what did God do? Here comes that word that I tell you guys I'm still trying to understand. He gave him the grace to make it through. There's things happening today that we don't understand. There's things that are happening today that yanks my heart out. It's not how Chris Lovett would make life go. But it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. We get that all messed up. We go through life. If we want a bike, we go buy it. If we want a car, we go buy it. If we want food, we spend too much money at the grocery store and buy anything we want. We get out of control. We forget when somebody passes away that's just, I mean, we can't hardly make it in life without them. We forget God's will is perfect. And we want God's will. We just forget that sometimes. Don't doubt. you got to pray positive. In this parable... represented by the widow she didn't worry that poor little lady she had too much going on to worry about what was going on I mean she had her sights set on that judge and he was going to listen she was persistent with the requests but is God like the crooked judge Does he have to be pestered and coerced before he'll answer prayers? Absolutely not. Parables not only contain in comparisons, but contrast as well. I read a story this week. And I told Amy and Jeff, Last night, I said, I'm going to talk about you. It's all right. I'll talk about all of you because when I, when I need a story, some of you has got some funny ones. But I told him I was going to talk about them. And there's a little bit of praise in the middle of all this stuff going on that we don't know. And we all know it's not over till God says it's over. It don't matter what the doctors say. It's not over till it's over. We got to claim that. I read a story this week that may help you through the struggles. It's been put forth this week. When my mother was dying of cancer. living with us in 1983. I fasted and prayed and asked God to completely heal. I didn't worry about it. I prayed about it. I didn't stop praying. I prayed persistently. I prayed in positive faith. I expected God to heal my mother. After months of praying for God to heal her, One day he spoke to me in the spirit. He said, David, I'm not going to heal her the way you want her to be healed. 
I'm going to totally heal her by bringing her home to be with me. And it was at that moment I stopped praying for him. I changed my prayer to, Dear Lord, keep her free from pain and help her to enjoy the days of this physical life that she has left. And God answered that prayer. I want the worship band to come.